right, we're in the home stretch here, and this is what the placemat is going to look like. So what I'm looking at here is the placement of the swirl blocks and the chicken blocks and how they are supposed to go together. So this looks like the little swirl has the hump on the top, so I need to pay attention to that. Or I could do it the other way. Either way is fine, you just have to decide which way you like. So on the first block, I can either do the swirl up like this, or I can do the swirl, if I want to do the swirl down, I need a different one. So either way is fine. I almost like the swirls going up instead of down. What do you guys think? I like it up. I think it looks like a little crown. So I'm going to do mine up, okay? That's just personal preference, you guys. Either way is fine. But um, you just, you want to make sure if you're looking for symmetry, you want to make sure that they are the same and not like that. You know what I mean? So that's this is kind of what we're going for. Okay, and then the way we're going to put this together is in columns. So I'm going to sew this block to here, this block here, and this block here, and then we'll sew the three columns together. So that's the way I plan on doing it. Sorry for the glare, guys. I got lights all over here so you can see what I'm doing. I want my swirly kind of facing up. And the way you would do this, I am using a cotton poly blend thread on my brother PQ1500 machine. I have a 7511 needle in the machine. And it's kind of an off-white. Let me get in real close so you can see what I'm doing. These blocks are designed, they're digitized, so that the corners of the stitch line match with each piece. All right. So regardless of what you've got out here, this could even be crooked and it would not matter. What you want to do is you want to match the corners here with the corner of the stitch line here. And then let me get my little nerd clip glasses. Thank you to the lady who recommended I get these. Okay. They kind of clip in the middle like these y'all. Oh my gosh, I love them. They live right next to my sewing machine. I'm never without glasses. So, on the back of the block, I want you to see this so you can get an idea. We're going to stitch. We're going to we're going to level up these blocks and then we're going to stitch right on the inside. Right inside that stitch line right here. Okay? You don't want to stitch on the outside of it because then your seam line will show outside of your seam allowance. You want to capture this line of stitching inside the seam allowance. So in order to do that, we're going to stitch exactly right inside. Like, I'm going to run my needle directly next to that line of stitching right there. Okay? So how you get these put together, I like that going up like that. Yep. Yeah. So how you get these together is you're going to use a couple of pins. And I'm going to put the pin directly into the corner of the stitching. It is right there in the corner. Can you see the pin? Right in the corner. And then I'm going to also put it right in the corner on this block. Right in the corner. Okay, and I want it level. You don't want it like tilted or anything. You want that pin level. Okay, and then, then you're going to take another pin and you're going to go, just like I do when I piece, I'm going to go in one side of the seam allowance and out the other of the seam line right there to anchor those together. I'm kind of at a diagonal, a little bit of a diagonal so that those are locked. You go in one side and out the other on a diagonal. But these are level, okay? Now I'm going to do the same thing over on the other corner. You want to do the corners first. I'm going to go in one side and in the other corner. 
right there. See, I'm getting in on the corners. I want that pin. Let me pull this one out. You can pull out the pin once you get it, once you get it anchored with your stitch pin. I want it level, and then I'm going to go in one side, out the other, just like this. Okay. And you you want them to be as straight as possible, but don't worry if your seam allowances are not the same width. Don't worry about that. If there was a wonky thing that happened in the cutting, don't worry about that. And then here in the center, same thing. I'm going to go right in at the seam line and right in at the seam line. I want this level. See, you can see here, my seam allowances are not the same. You can see the back one over the, over the front. See that? But they're level. Now I'm going to take another pin and I'm going to go in one side of the seam allowance and out the other so they are anchored. The reason you do this is so that no matter what your seam allowances look like, you're going to capture this seam inside of the seam allowance. You can even see here. See how they're not, this, this is wider. Don't worry about that. It doesn't matter. You do want it to be fairly straight. Okay, you do want your edges to be fairly level. You don't want your block wonky. You don't want it wonky. Needle so that it's going to hit just inside that seam right there. Pull the pin. And if we did it right, we won't see any seam at all. So you can't see that stitch line at all. That's exactly what you're looking for. And when you're doing quilt blocks, I would tell you don't press your seam open. But in this case, you do want to do that. You do want your seams open in this case because you want as little bulk as possible. So I'll press them open with my finger and then I'll take it to the ironing board and I will press it very flat. You can probably even use a clapper. So this looks good. Now look how this happened here. I wanna show you what you're after. See how this seam, it looks like one continuous line right there, okay? I'm gonna do the other two blocks now Anytime you make any of these placemats or table runners or tiling scenes, anything like that, this is the method that you'll use to make sure that you get your blocks as close to what the digitizer wanted as possible. If you use these, the, the corners and the center seam allowances, the, the stitch lines, to get everything lined up properly. Oh, that looks great. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? The stitch lines are completely lined up with each other and no seam there, no stitch line where the two meet. That's exactly what we're looking for. That's how you do it. It's pretty simple once you get the hang of it to make sure that those are all lined up. But um, looks super good. See, look here. Let me, let me zoom in so you can see. Can you see the stitch lines there? Right in here. That's what you want. You want those buried inside of the seam allowance. That looks so good. One of the things I love about these projects is that there's no horizontal seams we have to match. It's not like we have got to get that nested right. So these are great. They're pretty easy to do when they're like that. Oh, this is so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, so final one. This is such an easy one to put together. I like it. And I'm glad I did my little frilly the other way. All right. And if you can't get it right, like if you look, 
So like I, if I think I'm putting it in the corner of the stitching and then I come over here and look and come to find out I'm a stitch off, okay? One thing you can do is you can come in from the front side and put it right in that corner where you want it, right just inside that corner. Now you can see where it is and then you can put your pin right next to it. And then it'll be fine. And then that'll work out, okay? In the center. I don't recommend doing this and not stitching and not uh, pinning the centers. You might be sorry. You might be lucky, but you might you might have to take it apart. See what you're after? See how these seam lines look like one straight line? That's exactly what you're after, just like that. And I can see my seam lines in that inner fold right there. Okay, I am going to take it over to the ironing board and press it nice and flat. Now don't be worried about melting your thread. If you are using a good quality embroidery thread, they can take heat, no problem. Also, you need to make sure you're using a good quality stabilizer. It's taking the heat, no problem. It's not melting. And if you used I accidentally used a water soluble, <laughs> which happens, uh, don't use steam. You don't want to do that. You'll melt your stabilizer. So I have a little clapper here. Clappers are great. I'm going to turn this over. Now, I'm going to give this a good shot of steam and then use the clapper on it. Oh, that's so nice and flat. That looks so good. Nice and flat, that's what I'm after. This iron is a Sapporo 527 gravity fed iron. I've had it about six years. And I really like this. This is used by professional garment makers. And I really like it because it uses the solenoid over on the side. Ow, it's hot. It does not keep water in the iron, so it never, ever makes marks on my fabric. And the, the steam doesn't go into the iron until I press the butt. Okay, this is going to look great. Yep, this is going to look really, really good. Everybody's the same size, so that's going to look nice. Okay, back to the machine for the last two stitches. Oh, that looks great. Look at this. So my top edges are totally even, okay? My seam is completely captured inside of there. That looks great. Okay, so what I just did, when I cut this piece and I made a mistake, I didn't have a corner. I, I cut that corner off. So what I did was I took my friction marker, which goes away with the iron, and I extended this line out to here, and I extended this line down to here, and that gave me my point. So then I can put my pin right inside the point to mark it. And now I can see it from this side. There. And then I can put it here. And it's level. I tried it without doing that and it wasn't level. Now if you get to doing this and you find out you've got way more like on top than you do on the bottom, then put that side down to the feed dogs and let the feed dogs ease in the fabric so that you'll, you won't have any bumps or lumps. Bigger on bottom, you guys, that's a rule when you're sewing. Bigger on bottom. The feed dogs will take up some of the slack. So like here I've got a, a little lump. I'm gonna pull this too. I'm gonna see if I can't pull it and make it right. All right, let's go. All right, let's see how we did. Oh, it looks great. Look at that. Hole? What hole? I don't see a hole. Psh, what are you talking about? <laughs> that looks amazing. That looks really, really good. Where's that hole? The hole is, I couldn't even see it. The hole is down here. I captured it in the seam allowance. It's perfect. Look at that. All right, I'm going to go to the ironing board. 
I'm going to press these flat and use the clapper on it and then we're going to do our finishing. We're going to put the backing and do a self binding on it. All right. Now when you're doing these seams right here and you're ironing them out, you're going to iron them out. You want wherever you've got these seam allowances crossing to be flat. And the best way to do that is just take yourself a little pair of scissors. Where's my gingers? I want good scissors. Not that these fiskers aren't good, they are. They're just not the right tool for the job. So, what you would do is where this is gonna lay like this and this is gonna lay like this. Okay, so then you get this thing in here. Take your scissors and you want to cut right next to that seam allowance to but not through the seam. So I'm just gonna trim it through, I went through all layers, see that? I just went through all the layers. Don't cut through the seam so you have a hole. You don't want to do that. I'm going to do it at all of the junctions where that happened. And that is going to make your placemat so happy because you're going to have room for those seam allowances to go. And they like that. They're going to want to lay flat and behave. There we go. So see now I've got a little tab. Okay, and that's okay. I'm going to push this out nice and flat here. So this one's going out. And then where the seam allowance goes, it's going to go flat that way. And then the middle part is going to be opened, seam allowance is open, and then this one's going to be flat this way. Okay, what you end up with looks like this, okay? So these are laying flat this way, these are laying flat that way. They are so happy. They're nice and flat. They look wonderful. I'm going to do the same thing here. Lay this one open. Let that one lay flat. Push this one open. Anytime you're making one of these tiling scenes like this, and that's what this is, it's a tiling scene. You, took, you put a bunch of tiles together to make a design. So essentially that's what it is. So now all your seam allowances are laying open flat and where you've got these thick junctures, uh, they're laying nice and flat as well. And from the front, it just looks amazing. It is so flat and so pretty. Okay, now that I've got this all nice and flat, here is my backing piece and I'm going to use my magic premium quilting and crafting spray. Ah! Spider, get off my fabric. Ooh, got him. <laughs> that a spider. Where'd he come from? Y'all, the door in this room opens to the outside. You never know what comes in. <laughs> so I'm going to press this nice and flat. All right, now that I have this all nice and flat, and I've got a fat quarter that I'm gonna use for the backing and the binding, I'm gonna do a self binding. I'm gonna use some 505, this is temporary basting spray, and I'm gonna spray it onto the back of the placemat. All right, and then I'm gonna turn it over and put it on here and make sure, I really want um, about an inch all the way around extra, but don't cut it yet, 
okay? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch in the ditch. And what that means is I'm going to make almost an invisible line right through on every one of these seams, okay? And stitch in the ditch. You want to start in the middle on the two long ones and then work your way on the other ones toward the outside. And what that's going to do is anchor this to the backing and then we can cut to an inch all the way around. I'll probably move it over like this so I'm, I'm, I can still have a little bit of scrap left over for something another, for another project. That way if the backing gets drawn up at all it will be um, anchored to the backing and we'll still have some extra. So I'm going to do about like this, okay? And that's fine, just like that. If the fumes are going to bother you, you'll want to go outside and do that. I got a crease that's bothering me right here. I hate that. I didn't need to do that, but now I'm happy. Okay, so now I'm just going to put this on right about here. I plan on cutting it to an inch, but I've got lots of extra, so if it, if it wants to get crazy, I'm all right. I've got plenty. Start in the middle and smooth it out. I'm pinning, leaving plenty of room for the presser foot to travel on these seam lines. You don't have to use that basting spray, it's just very handy. Helps kind of keep things nice and smooth and flat while you're doing your pinning, but you don't have to if you don't have it. Or again, you can use a glue stick. There's always that too. And see the back of it, very smooth. No bumps or bubbles or ripples or anything like that. So look. You cannot see that seam at all. Now you can see it on the back, kind of. It's right there, that white line. But nobody's going to look at the back, so I don't care about that. I'm going to take this over to the cutting table, and I'm going to trim this outside edge to a quarter of an inch, I'm pretty sure. Then I'm going to trim the backing to one inch. I'm going to trim the outside of this to a quarter of an inch. If I'd have thought about it, I'd have probably done it before I stitched on the backing. But I'm just going to take my seam ripper and get in here and then open these up. Just get back to that seam line right there. And then get the backing out of the way. and give myself a quarter of an inch seam allowance. The reason I'm doing this is because when I fold up the edge of the binding, I just, I'm gonna bring it right to this seam line right here so you don't see it, the stitch line. And I don't want a big wide binding on my placemat. I want my binding to be more narrow. So that's why you can leave it at a half inch like it is, and then you can give yourself a half inch binding. You can do it that way. I don't want to. I want my binding to be a little bit more narrow than that. One inch away from the edge, and I'm gonna square it up making sure this line is here and this line is good, yeah. So there's my nice, whoop, nice scrap piece there. See, you get these ripples, that always happens. You didn't do anything right or wrong. It just always happens like that. So that's why you want to give yourself a little bit of extra space when you're stitching, you're stitching the ditch so that if it ripples, you've got room to um, work with the excess and ease. Okay, do it close down here to you. Fold it in to the edge, okay, and then fold it up and over. 
So it looks just like this. What I have here, this is a piece of cardboard from a Blink outdoor camera box that we got in the mail. I trimmed it to a 45 degree angle and that way I can flip it either direction and I can use that 45 to help me make my, my binding corners. The first thing I want to do, this is Steema Seam 2 and it's the quarter inch. So I prefer the one quarter inch because that's the width I have here. And I'm just going to take it out. I guess I'm going to do the long edges first. Okay, fine. Whatever. And I am putting the edge of this right on the edge of the stitching. I hate fiddly stuff. This is definitely fiddly stuff. All right. So I'm pulling the paper off. There. Okay. Now I'm going to fold this up. Y'all can make your own 45 degree templates. Just get a cereal box, Kleenex box, any kind of cardboard will work. And I'm just folding the edge of the fabric, backing fabric, up to the edge of the placemat. And then I'm just going to fold it up and put it right to the, and I'm just going to eyeball this. But what I'm trying to do, I know it's hard to see you guys, I'm sorry my hands are in the way, okay. But I'm trying to make the binding the same length, I'm eyeballing it so it looks right. Even if it's not exactly right, it looks right to the eye. That's how you kind of straighten these out when they, when they want to give you um, attitude. So see that looks straight when you look at it. That looks real nice. That looks good. Now I'm going to do this side. Okay. All right. Now comes the finicky part. This looks good. Look at that. Looks good on the back. Now we need to make the 45. So I'm going to fold in my fabric with a 45 degree angle right here first before I put down any of the steam seam. And then I take the 45 degree angle and I place it against right at the edge of the placemat top. And this is not going to be exact, so you kind of got to play with it until you like how it looks. I'm going to fold this up. And that's too wide. So I backed it up a little bit. And I'm going to fold it up again and fold it up again. Use my 45. And pull that out. That looks a lot better. That gives me a really nice point. So what I did was, and I had it folded where this piece was folded all the way up flush to here, and that was too wide and I got a big gap. So I backed it up a little bit, like a quarter of an inch, okay? And that, when I fold it up, gets better. You always want to test it with a fold first before you put any sticky on there. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to fold this kind of short to the edge of the placemat. I'm going to put my 45 on here like this. Fold this up. Ah, that's perfect. And that gives me a nice point on that one right there. Okay, so I'm ready now to fold this. So I can see how it's going to look. Now, I only put the steam seam on the placemat. I didn't put it out on the binding. And I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine, and I'm going to do a blanket stitch to stitch it down. Oh, that looks really good. These things are invaluable, these little template tools. You make your own. Or if you've got one you bought somewhere, whatever works, you know. Look how nice that looks. See that corner? That looks great. Both of them do. Okay, then I'm going to go with my sewing machine and I'm going to blanket stitch this down. <clears throat> but that looks so good. Okay, so I'm going to show you real close before I finalize this. When you fold this up, fold it where you've got, you can see the back side of the backing fabric just a tiny bit. That's going to give you the room you need to make that 45 real sharp. Look at that. Perfect corner. See that? Okay. 
Now I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this down. They both turned out really nice. Love it. I am getting ready to use the blanket stitch to stitch this down. This is my brother NQ3700D and it is my newest machine. Her name is Gypsy. She's my travel machine and it's a combo machine so it also does embroidery up to a 6x10 hoop and I love it. It's great. It's perfect for on the road when we travel. And I love that it has all the little stitch uh, signs up here. My other machines, I used to have to look for a card and pull out, try to find what it was I was looking for. I could do number 10, and that is number 21, because that's a blind stitch in the ditch, but it's a blanket stitch to the left. So how we get there is on... The front of the machine, there's a button down here, and these are those 1 through 10 modules. So I touch it, and I want to go to number 10 right there. And then I want number 21 in that section, and so we have 1 through 10 pages right here. You can see 1 through 10, and I've got arrow buttons right here, and I'm just going to arrow over until I get to 21. I'm looking, there's through 18, there it is. There it is right there. That's the one I want, so I'm going to touch it. That's awesome. So it have a stitch width of 4.0, length of 2.5. It's good to go. Gosh, that was easy. All right. And it tells me I need the N foot, and that is the, uh, this is the J foot. The little letter J is right there, so I don't know if you can see it. Can you guys see the J? There's a J in there. I need the end foot, and let me find that. That's this one right here. It's marked with an N on the, in the little tray. It comes with all of these feet, and N went right there. So it's got the low shank to be able to put it on really easy. And I'm just gonna drop the foot until it's on there. There we go, and bring it back up. There. Whoops, let me put this back. Okay, this is great. I've got matching thread, so I'm gonna position the edge of the binding right underneath the needle. And I think I want the width just a little bit shorter. So I wanna change the stitch width to something a little smaller. That 4.0 is a little wide, I think. For such a, a small print, I want something more short. So I just touch this button up here and bring it down to maybe three or two and a half. Yeah, I like that, two and a half. Tell it okay, that's better. All right. I keep this one set as my primary uh, sewing machine because I have the W foot on the Luminaire as my primary single needle embroidery machine. Oh, that looks so good. I'm so pleased with this. When you use that steam seam to put this down, um, it holds everything so flat so you don't get any bubbles or ripples or anything while you're sewing. And at the end, this machine has what's called a lock stitch and it's the, the button with a little tiny circle on it right there and you can push it and it will just look like it's staying in place, but it's gonna do little teeny tiny lock stitches because it won't go backwards using the blanket stitch. That's it, all done. I love that lock stitch button. And the trim, cut the uh, threads real close. That looks great. Oh my gosh, you guys, this looks so good. I'm so pleased with this. How nice. Okay, you guys, this was a lot of fun. It turned out just adorable. I absolutely love it. It is so cute. I need to get another one done. <laughs> I'm digging her glasses. How cool is that? All right. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.